During the final decades of the Galactic Republic, a male of the Chiss species was born on the planet of Scylla. And while Mithra Nuruodo and his brother Mithras Sapis grew up as mere commoners, they both proved skilled in their own ways, with Mithras Sapis going into politics and rising to the rank of Syndic, while Mithra Nuruodo used his tactical brilliance to join the Chiss Expansionary Defense Force, quickly reaching the rank of Force Commander. Their achievements were noticed by the ruling families of the government, and so both brothers were made merit adoptives of the Myth family, also known as the eighth ruling family of the Chiss ascendancy. Mithra Nuruodo, or Thrawn as he would come to be known in the core worlds, continued his impressive rise to power, becoming the youngest to ever reach the rank of commander. His success led the eighth ruling family to raise him further in status, becoming trialborn, meaning he was eligible to become a permanent member of the family. During much of his time with the Defense Force, Thrawn commanded the combat cruiser Springhawk and explored many areas within the unknown regions, becoming the first known Chiss to make contact with humans when he saved the light freighter Bargain Hunter from a pirate attack. Through the use of the trade language C. Bisti, Thrawn was able to communicate with them, befriending them somewhat, and learning basic from their interactions. Sometime later, Thrawn received word about a Vagari ship near Chiss Space, a species known for piracy and slavery who had been pillaging the area outside Chiss borders for a decade. He then ordered the Springhawk to pursue the vessel, defeating and boarding their ship, discovering a great deal of treasure looted from various worlds. Thrawn tried to use this as evidence to convince the Chiss government to send more ships against the Vagari, but was instead chastised for his preemptive strike philosophy since it went against his species' moral code. Undeterred and unwilling to allow the Vagari to continue raiding unopposed, Thrawn ignored the wishes of the ruling families, even willing to risk his status within society. He then engaged the enemy again, capturing one of their gravity well projectors, so it might be studied and used against them. But having lost some of his men during the confrontation, the event was reported to the ruling families, who again admonished Thrawn for his actions. Still unrepentant and eager to eliminate the Vagari threat once and for all, he embraced an opportunity that presented itself when he encountered a convoy of ships from the Trade Federation in the unknown regions. Though they outnumbered and outgunned Thrawn's forces, the Chiss commander was able to use his tactical wisdom to utterly defeat the enemy ships without suffering even a single casualty. Boarding the main ship, he soon discovered they were representatives of Chancellor Palpatine, leader of the Galactic Republic, also known as Dark Lord Sidious. They told him they were sent on a mission to destroy the Jedi ship Outbound Flight, which sought to explore beyond the galaxy. This had to be stopped because of a group of potential enemies known as the Far Outsiders, who were amassing forces at the edge of the galaxy in preparation for a massive massive invasion. If these hostile aliens were to capture the outbound flight, they might learn of the Republic, placing them in great danger, and so Lord Sidious had decided the ship must be destroyed. Thrawn even spoke to the Dark Lord directly, confirming the story. Sidious was impressed with Thrawn's military abilities, and so ordered his men to share their intelligence about outbound flight and the Far Outsiders, while Thrawn agreed to help stop the Jedi ship before it could leave their space. At the same time, he used his human ally, Kardas, to feign betrayal and lead the Vagari to attack Thrawn's position, even gifting the enemy some battle droids. But the Chiss commander orchestrated events so that the Vagari would attack at the same time Thrawn's fleet confronted the outbound flight, causing his enemies to attack each other and allowing for his forces to slip in and do massive damage. In addition, the battle droids Kardas had given the Vagari turned against them in the midst of battle, killing the Vagari leaders on board their flagship. When Thrawn contacted Jedi Master Joris Sabayoth, commanding of the outbound flight, asking him to surrender, the Force user refused, then using his powers to force choke Thrawn. Defense Force soldiers quickly responded, reassigning vessels to emit heavy radiation onto the Jedi's ship, killing Joris Sabayoth and breaking the force choke threatening Thrawn. And while their quick thinking saved his life, the event also gave time for the remaining Vagari vessels to escape. They were then visited by Chaform Bintrano of the fifth ruling family, who they suspected had come to reprimand Thrawn and possibly confiscate the outbound flight's technology for himself. And so Thrawn's brother, Mithras Sapis, also known by his core name Thras, flew the ship away before it could be seized, thereby giving Thrawn a bargaining chip he could use to avoid punishment from the government. Unfortunately, however, the outbound flight was not heard from again for many years, and with the loss of the ship, Thrawn's brother Thras also disappeared. Over the next few years, Chancellor Palpatine contacted his new Chiss ally a number of times, attempting to enlist his aid. 
Thrawn, fed up with the politics of his people and eager to work for Palpatine, then decided to orchestrate his own downfall, continuing his preemptive strikes against Chiss' enemies, until eventually stripped of all rank and status within the ruling families, exiled to a primitive and isolated world in the Unknown Regions. Surviving there for a time, he eventually escaped on board an Imperial Star Destroyer that came to the planet pursuing a smuggler named Booster Tarek. Thrawn used his knowledge of the terrain and tactical brilliance to organize a number of attacks against their encampment, then hiding in a power generator casing to get on board their ship. Yet when he attempted to leave his hiding place, he was captured by Imperials who were monitoring the area. Thrawn, obviously outnumbered and without recourse, quickly surrendered to them, but avoided punishment by greatly impressing Imperial officer Voss Park, who was stunned that the former Chiss commander had been capable of doing so much damage on the planet and infiltrated their ship all on his own. And so Park brought Thrawn back with him to the former Republic, now Empire, presenting him as a gift to Emperor Palpatine, in the hopes it would please the dark robe leader and make up for their failure to capture Booster Tarek. Palpatine indeed was pleased to finally meet Thrawn face to face, and while he publicly insulted him to keep up appearances in the royal court about the government's disdain for non-humans, in truth he was happy to recruit Thrawn into the Empire, with Park acting as his trainer and mentor until beginning his training at the private Imperial Academy of Corita. Although he faced constant discrimination for being non-human, he quickly rose through the ranks, even coming to teach at the Academy for for a time before heading back out to further explore the unknown regions. This time with Imperial support setting up a military presence in the area, Thrawn's ultimate goal was to help Palpatine unite the galaxy together so they might have the strength to resist the far outsiders, threatening the Chiss and so many others. And so, with this goal in mind, he organized a vast network of allies, spies, and contacts throughout the unknown regions, creating a territory known as the Empire of the Hand, ruled by Thrawn. And while he remained loyal to Emperor Palpatine, considering his territory as under the umbrella of the larger Galactic Empire. He administered the region differently, ruling through consent rather than terror, and granting planets and systems far more autonomy. Thrawn's rise to power also came to the attention of the Chiss, and while the ruling families still saw him with disdain, many others rallied to his cause, increasing the size and quality of his forces in the area. After years of dutiful service to the Empire, Thrawn was given command of the Star Destroyer Vengeance, serving under the Dark Jedi Inquisitor Jarek. Jarek survived Order 66 but was later captured by the Empire and avoided death by accepting the Dark Side. Working together, Jarek and Thrawn destroyed the Rebellion on Sulon and executed the Force-sensitive Morgan Katarn. The following year, the Imperial superweapon known as the Death Star was unveiled to the galaxy following the destruction of Alderaan, which was known to have deep ties to the Rebel Alliance. In response, the Rebels attacked and destroyed the Death Star, made possible by Luke Skywalker, the powerful Force-sensitive child of Darth Vader, raised away from his father on Tatooine under the supervision of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Master Kenobi looked out for the boy from afar, but when the time came, began his training as a Jedi. Two weeks later, Thrawn and nine other Imperial officers were called into a private meeting with Emperor Palpatine and apprised of the situation. Although Thrawn suggested immediately attacking the rebel base, Palpatine chose to wait and ordered them to investigate the identity of the pilot responsible for the destruction of the Death Star. Several months later, Thrawn, now at the rank of Senior Captain, was given command of the Task Force at Monitor and returned to the Unknown Regions, where a new warlord named Nuso Esva was rising in power, conquering his own territory and raising a mighty fleet. Thrawn originally attempted to ally himself with Esfa, but was rejected, leading to hostilities between them. The warlord, however, proved a tactical genius, equaling Thrawn and proving difficult to defeat. With Palpatine unable to provide reinforcements, Thrawn turned to Darth Vader, who granted his request in exchange for the Chiss captain's help in locating a rebel base. Engaging with the eastern fleet of Esfa in the Poln system, the combined forces of Thrawn and Vader proved victorious. In the chaos of battle, a group of rebels on Poln Minor managed to escape the area with a number of stolen supplies. Thrawn was able to use the list of items taken to create a profile of where they were going, and was therefore able to locate the rebel base, fulfilling his promise to Lord Vader. After the fighting, he was introduced to a group of five former stormtroopers who deserted after one of them killed an Imperial officer. They were now known as the Hand of Judgment and impressed Thrawn not only with their fighting skills, but also with their tolerance for other species. And so 
rather than turning them over to the Empire, he hired them to train a new army known as the 501st Stormtrooper Legion that would include members of many different species and would operate exclusively within the Empire of the Hand. Thrawn's continued success eventually led to his promotion to Vice Admiral, then made Grand Admiral in a private ceremony on Coruscant. However, his rank was largely kept secret within the Empire, as only 12 Grand Admirals were allowed to exist and all the positions were filled. Yet despite his favor with the Emperor, Thrawn did not follow orders blindly, even refusing a direct order on several occasions, when he felt the mission was doomed for failure and would waste resources. During one such occasion, the Emperor was outraged and named him a traitor then assigning another officer to the mission. Yet when the attack proved a failure, the Emperor gained a new respect for Thrawn's judgment. The Chiss Grand Admiral had risen so high, he was even granted the title of Warlord, but soon found that others within the Imperial Court did not appreciate his rapid rise to power, and so many began to plot against him, hoping to have him exiled from the core. Palpatine and Thrawn used this as an opportunity and staged the Grand Admiral's fall from grace, wherein his allies were demoted and he was effectively exiled, sent to the unknown regions on a mapping mission. This, however, was exactly what Thrawn wanted and allowed him to return to his work in the Empire of the Hand. With fresh Imperial resources, the Grand Admiral was able to construct a number of Imperial bases and settlements, using ruthless tactics to conquer new worlds. Only once did Thrawn fail in defeating enemy forces, and so ordered the planet's destruction. Though many civilizations were destroyed, Thrawn made sure to allow their artwork to survive, having a deep personal fascination with the subject, using his studies of different species' art to learn about their culture so he might better understand how to defeat them in battle. Thrawn's forces even began to operate in wild space, but found it difficult to gain and maintain territory, and so concentrated primarily on expanding within the unknown regions. After successfully quelling an attempted mutiny and his continued success in conquering new worlds, Thrawn was recalled to Coruscant, where he was inducted into the Order of the Canted Circle. Before returning to the unknown regions, Thrawn agreed to help Darth Vader on a mission against the Black Sun criminal cartel. He was then rewarded by the Dark Lord by being given command of the Nogri, a species who were saved by the Empire, and so offered their allegiance in return, becoming private Imperial commandos, used directly by Vader, Sidious, and now Thrawn. The Chiss Grand Admiral then worked with Vader again to uncover a rebel base on Dara IV, which in turn led them to send probe droids throughout the western reaches until finding the main rebel stronghold on Hoth. After the Battle of Hoth in 3 ABY, Thrawn continued his work with Vader, attacking a rebel space station in the Outer Rim. Although the Empire seemed to be making progress in their war against the Rebellion, they were forced to go on the defensive for a time when Grand Admiral Demetrius Zarin staged a coup d'etat, attempting to capture Palpatine and take over the Empire. However, Darth Vader and Thrawn quickly came to the Emperor's rescue, though Zarin managed to escape. Thrawn was then assigned to capture the rogue Imperial, who was continuing his war against the Empire, sabotaging Imperial manufacturing facilities. Thrawn took the place of Zarin and became an official Grand Admiral, eventually finding the traitor and seeing him killed. The Chiss Imperial then returned to the Unknown Regions, where he learned of a rebel attack on the second Death Star in the Battle of Endor and of the deaths of Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. Following the Battle of Endor, Thrawn focused his attention on securing and defending the Empire of the Hand, while the remnants of Palpatine's government scrambled to defend against the rebels, which soon established themselves as the New Republic. Fortunately for Thrawn, they were unaware that Demetrius Zarin had been replaced as the 12th Grand Admiral, which meant no one was searching for the Chiss Imperial. During his time away from the Galactic Core, Thrawn's forces battled the Si Ruvi Imperium, who'd been making advances into Chiss space. Meanwhile, the Empire, which had lost three quarters of their former territories, were now largely under the command of Yisin Isard, who kept in contact with Thrawn, though he did not trust her to rule the Empire. And as the New Republic continued to win victories, more and more ships were being transferred out of Thrawn's command to aid in the war effort. Despite the chaos in the galaxy, the Grand Admiral never forgot the real threat waiting from the far outsiders, and so continued his work to defend against their impending invasion. Part of this mission involved recruiting worthy officers, such as Sun Tyr Fell, a hero of the Empire turned rebel agent. Although Isard wanted to execute the traitor, Thrawn had him sent to the Unknown Regions, where he explained the larger goal and the threat of the Far Outsiders. Fell, seeing the seriousness of the situation, and that Thrawn was a non-oppressive yet also highly intelligent ruler, he was swayed to join the Empire of the Hand. 
in 8 ABY, Thrawn at last defeated the outlaw Nuso Esfa, who died in the Battle of Quethold. And while the Grand Admiral's efforts were successful in securing his own territories, the Empire itself was at the point of collapse. On Coruscant, Isard had been ousted from power, and the remaining Moffs squabbled amongst themselves. It was at this point that Grand Admiral Thrawn returned to the known regions of the galaxy, leaving his forces behind to defend the Empire of the Hand, while using his sway as Grand Admiral to summon what support he could from the remaining agents and strongholds of the Empire. Thrawn personally took command of the Star Destroyer Chimera, with Gilead Pelion as his first officer. Some in the ruling council also gave their support, sending him a small fleet, but most Moffs hoarded their resources and sent nothing. In addition, many that did come to support Thrawn did so in order to use him as a puppet. But Thrawn proved both strategically brilliant and politically astute, able to slowly gain the support of a large portion of the Empire, winning a number of victories against the New Republic through his campaign in the Outer Rim, and even gaining the allegiance of the influential Dasta family, who held the largest private military in the fleet. Part of Thrawn's success revolved around his continued study and appreciation of art, which informed his strategic thinking as he interacted with the various species of the galaxy. This then led him on one occasion to Tatooine, where an auction was being held for a famous Alderanian painting, which was taken off-world before the destruction of the planet. However, others had also come to bid on the item, such as Leia Organa of the New Republic and her husband Han Solo, who were on a mission to retrieve the key code hidden within the painting. This code gave entry to the Shadowcast Communications Network, which the Rebels created years earlier to communicate in secret with their agents. After the New Republic successfully won the auction, Commander Quentin, Thrawn's representative on the planet, attempted to take it by force. And so a fight broke out, with the painting stolen and New Republic agents fleeing into the desert. Eventually Thrawn's people tracked down what they were after, but not before Han and Leia removed the code, and then escaped the planet. Early on in his campaign, Thrawn sought an Imperial storehouse that once belonged to Palpatine, containing schematics to a cloaking device and at least 20,000 Spa'arti cloning cylinders. With the cylinders, Thrawn could rapidly create a clone army for his fleet in a renewed offensive against the New Republic. In order to prevent clone madness, a disease in which clones were driven to insanity by prolonged exposure to the Force, Thrawn had beings known as the Salamiri, which he'd discovered many years earlier, learning that they possessed the natural ability to suppress the force around them. After a number of victories against the New Republic, and with his support amongst the remaining factions of the Empire increasing, Thrawn found the storehouse on the planet of Wayland. However, what he did not expect to find was the clone of Jorah Sabayoth, who had used his force powers to become the ruler of the local population, often tapping into his abilities to control their actions directly. The Grand Admiral saw almost immediately that he was suffering from clone madness, but felt a powerful Jedi could prove useful to his efforts, and so made a deal with Sabayoth, requesting the use of his abilities, such as battle meditation, in exchange for finding Luke Skywalker along with his pregnant sister Leia, whose children would like likely inherit Force capabilities. In this way, Sabayoth could start a new Jedi Order, which he would personally lead and shape. An offer he could not refuse. Thrawn immediately began activating clones, and while normal clones needed a year to develop a healthy mental state, the Imperials were able to produce them within 20 days, thanks to the Asalamiri, which blocked the Force from hindering their progress. This increased personnel meant he would soon have a large army capable of dealing a crippling blow to the New Republic. In addition, Thrawn had discovered a new form of gathering intelligence, known as Delta Source, audio recording devices scattered throughout Coruscant, which Palpatine used to spy on the population and his government officials. Through Delta Source, the Empire was able to track down Luke and Leia, sending Nogri commandos to capture them, who even after several attempts proved unsuccessful. Meanwhile, Thrawn moved on to the problem of acquiring more ships for his new personnel, and set about stealing a number of plasma jet mole miners from Lando Calrissian in order to use their plasma torches to attack and breach the Hall of Warships, which they could then steal for the Empire. However, during the Battle of Sluis Van, the unexpected presence of Han Solo and Lando Calrissian aboard the Millennium Falcon disrupted the Empire's plans, ultimately defeating Thrawn. Yet while they suffered a setback, the New Republic endured heavy casualties, and Thrawn was undeterred, confident they would be victorious in the end. With the larger threat of the Far Outsiders ever present in his mind, Thrawn continued to work towards a united galactic government which could be militarized in anticipation of the coming invasion. 
in addition to the remnants of the Empire, now largely under his control. He possessed the ability to clone an army, and so was in need of ships for his new personnel. After their defeat at Sluis Van, Thrawn ordered his first officer, Gilad Pelion, to reach out to the criminal underworld and offer 20% above market value for any armed ships over 100,000 tons. With his numbers now steadily growing, Thrawn increased his attacks against the New Republic, raiding convoys along major trade routes. He also sought to destabilize their government by planting evidence against Supreme Commander Akbar, leading to his arrest on charges of treason. This then allowed for Akbar's political rival, Borsk Felia, to take command, dividing the loyalties of the defense fleet. While Thrawn was succeeding with many of his plans, he was still having trouble capturing Luke and Leia for his temporary ally, Jedi Master Joris Sabayoth. Starting to have doubts about the loyalty of the Nogri, who led the commando units, he personally went to their homeworld, where he discovered that Kabarak, one of their warriors, may have betrayed the Empire. Kabarak, having discovered that Leia was the daughter of Darth Vader, believed his loyalty must first be to the descendant of their savior, and helped her come to their planet and try to sway the Nogri against the Empire. After the arrest of the traitor, Thrawn left their world and went to Endor, searching for the Millennium Falcon. While in the system, he met with Mara Jade, who had been captured by Imperial forces, but used her former rank as the Emperor's hand to get a meeting. In an attempt to have him remove the bounty of 20,000 credits on her friend Talon Card, she told him that they could offer the location of the legendary Katana fleet, 200 slave-rigged dreadnoughts which would serve him greatly in the battles ahead. Thrawn agreed to the deal, but would not leave it to chance, and so secretly tracked Mara's ship when she departed, using her to find and capture Card. Mara Jade, furious at his betrayal of their agreement, attacked Thrawn with her force powers. However, his Nogri bodyguard, Rook, quickly intervened and she relented. Thrawn then tried to renegotiate their deal, saying that once they gave him the information about the fleet, they'd be allowed to go free. But Mara no longer had any trust left in the Empire, believing it was not the same government she once served, and so left to go find Luke Skywalker, enlisting his help in rescuing Card. Although they were able to free him before he could reveal the location of the Katana fleet, Thrawn had a backup plan, tracking down a smuggler named Hofner, who also knew where they could be found. However, Talon Card was now working with the New Republic, and so both factions learned of the fleet's location. Yet it was the Empire's forces which arrived first, able to capture all but 15 of the ships. A battle soon erupted over the remaining vessels, but Thrawn was unable to aid his forces due to the Jedi Master Joris Sabayoth, who demanded an immediate audience and used his force powers to prevent Thrawn from leaving. As a result, the Empire lost the battle and was forced into retreat. Nevertheless, they captured the vast majority of the Dreadnoughts, and so Thrawn now prepared to launch a final campaign towards victory. Although confident he would succeed, he also understood nothing was guaranteed, and so put in place a number of contingency plans in the event of his defeat. One such plan was to have a special clone of himself prepared in a secret location who could continue his efforts to secure the galaxy after his death. He also scattered a number of sleeper clones throughout New Republic and Imperial space, which could be used in the future as a resistance army against the Far Outsiders if both galactic governments should fall. With his contingencies in place, Thrawn went on the offensive, capturing the planet of Ukiyo and many others. With Admiral Akbar having been reinstated to his position, the New Republic regrouped and tried to counterstrike against the Empire, targeting their shipyards to slow down their manufacturing capabilities. Meanwhile, Talon Card was working to create an alliance of smugglers to aid the New Republic in their struggle. Thrawn, now ready to push into the Core Worlds, captured Emrist and laid siege to Coruscant, placing 22 cloaked asteroids around the planet while giving the impression that there were many more, forcing them to keep their planetary defense shield activated and preventing them from leaving. In order to lift the siege, the New Republic required a crystal grab field trap, making a plan to capture one from an Imperial shipyard. While capturing Zafel, Thrawn learned of an attack against Tangreen, but suspected it was a misdirect, instead ordering his forces to the Bilbringi shipyard, where the real assault was occurring. Although Imperial forces were well positioned to destroy the enemy fleet, the Smuggler's Alliance led by Talon Card soon arrived and came to the aid of the New Republic. Nevertheless, Thrawn might have been victorious in this battle had it not been for the betrayal of the Nogri. After leaving the Nogri homeworld, Leia Organa had presented evidence that the Empire had been poisoning their planet to make them dependent and keep them subjugated. And so they pledged themselves to help Leia Organa joining Luke and Mara Jade on a mission to the planet Wayland, where they confronted Joris Sabayoth and killed the Mad Jedi. 
While on board the Chimera, commanding at the Battle of Bilbringi, Thrawn learned of all that had occurred on Wayland, but it was too late as his Nogri bodyguard, Rook, stabbed him through the chest. Declaring that the Nogri had been avenged, Rook tried to make his way off the ship, but was killed by Imperial forces. With Thrawn dead, Pelion had no choice but to order retreat, giving victory to the New Republic. Although the Empire continued on for a time, without a strong central ruler like Thrawn, they largely fell to infighting, and by 11 ABY had lost most of the gains achieved by the Chiss commander. In 18 ABY, Gilead Pelion led the remnants of the Empire to war once more with the New Republic, but was defeated, leading to to the signing of a peace treaty the following year. Meanwhile, Thrawn's clone continued to grow, while the Empire of the Hand awaited the return of their leader, having been told that he would appear ten years after his death. However, the clone was involuntarily destroyed by Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker when they entered the facility and activated the defense systems. The Empire of the Hand, meanwhile, attempted to go forward, honoring the legacy of Thrawn by continuing to prepare their sector of space for the invasion of the Far Outsiders. However, with their leader dead and his clone clone destroyed, they soon diminished in power and disbanded. And so in 25 ABY, when at last the Far Outsiders, also known as the Yuuzhan Vong, invaded the galaxy, they found only a weakened New Republic and a shattered Imperial Remnant, quickly able to overpower both and bring utter devastation upon the galaxy. Many years later, in 55 ABY, as a result of all that had occurred, the Imperial Partisan and polemicist Lenang Opali wrote about Thrawn and Palpatine. I am baffled by critics who accept Mithra Nuruodu's account of his discussion with Palpatine about the Far Outsiders, yet refuse to revise their opinions about either man. They ignore what Mithra Nuruodu reported Palpatine believed that the weak Republic would be defeated by the Vong and had to be reforged into an orderly, militarized society able to resist them. They refuse to consider the possibility that the Empire's apparent brutality and ruthlessness were necessary parts of preparing for that terrible war. Why do they refuse to do so? Because that would lead them to the only logical conclusion that Palpatine was right. Do your shopping on Amazon? Then why not use the link in the description box below to either the Canadian, American, or UK Amazon sites where you support the channel with every purchase at no extra cost to you. So if you do your shopping on Amazon anyway, why not use the link below and help support Civilization X? A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Dayron of House Ashford, Hayaki Snowbeard, Jampo the Mad, and Jory Redblade. If you would like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like and subscribe, and click on the links to see more.